All right, so the purpose of this video is to give you a deeper explanation as to how the formulas for um, solving for the frequency of different harmonics is designed. So we have an example up top of a string that is length L, okay? So if you think back to uh, the demonstration in class of the string that was um, is suspended on the physics stand, and we created the different harmonics on that string. So that's what we have. We have one string of length L. Now, I have L equals blank lambda. So this is saying on the string, we can fit however many wavelengths, okay? Underneath that, I took that same relationship and instead of saying how many wavelengths can we fit on one string, I changed it to be in terms of um, how much of the length of the string we need in order to create one wave, okay? Then next to that, I have a V equals F lambda, which is just our formula for wave speed. And to the right of that, I simply rewrote the equation. If we were solving for frequency, we would take velocity divided by wavelength. So this is the relationship that we are going to need in order to put our um, values into the equation so that we can see what that F equals NV over 4L or over 2L means, okay? We're going to be using the relationships on the right of um, the string length and the wavelength to help us understand what numbers need to go into that equation. So I already have some sketches of some waves that we are going to create here. So if you recall on the string, I was able to make the first harmonic, which was actually only half of the wave. Then I was able to make the second, third, and so on. So I have already sketched for us four harmonics, okay? So in the beginning, we are saying that if we create that first harmonic, we actually have created half of a wave on our string. So if you recall, the wave came in to some sort of fixed barrier or boundary. So in this particular case, our wave is closed on both sides. So I'm going to pick a different color here so we can see. So our wave is going to go, um, let's just have our wave moving to the right for these examples. So our fixed boundary is going to be over here on the right hand side. Okay, so our wave comes into our fixed barrier on the right and then it is reflected back so that it is inverted. And so it's gonna come back on the other side, something like this, okay? So when we have this reflected wave, we end up with this little bubble shape. And we talked about the nodes and the anti-nodes. So you can see that I have the nodes already um, labeled for us. And the anti-nodes would be the maximum displacement here. So that we have one anti-node and two nodes on this particular image. So the length of the string if we use the entire string length, this is only half of the wave because that original um, solid line that we had in the dark blue, that is showing this is the actual original wave and then the inverted wave is um, just that reflection effect, okay? So we only have half of a wave cycle here. This is only half of a wave. So we're going to say that the length of the string is equal to one half of a wave or one half wavelength. Now, if we were to put this in terms of wavelengths, then it would take two full lengths of the string in order to make one complete wave. So we would need two lengths of the string, and I'm going to write this as a fraction, two over one lengths of the string in order to make one complete wave. Now, as I go through this, it will seem a little odd for me to um, demonstrate this with fractions, but you will see in the end, we're gonna go back and reflect on those fractions so that we can understand the pattern that um, is needed in order to develop the equation that we are given in our notes, okay? So if we wanted to find the frequency of this wave, then we would say F is equal to, it's going to be the speed of the wave divided by that wavelength. Well, let's take this equation and let's rewrite that. Instead of having our wavelength as the denominator, 
let's say how much of the string. So here we said that we have one wave is going to require two string lengths. So I'm going to say two, oops, I'm going to say two over one L as our denominator. So I just substituted in what the wavelength was equivalent to. Now, when we go to um, solve for this or simplify this equation, we cannot leave a fraction inside of a fraction. So we would need to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the reciprocal. So we're multiplying by one over two, and that's going to give me one over two V divided by L, which we would typically just write the one in the numerator and we would put the two in the denominator. So this comes out to V over two L. For the next example, I have two um, harmonics that are going to be present on my string length. So here the dark line represents the original wave. Remember, it is going into the right, it is hitting that fixed boundary, and then it is bouncing back to the left. So my wave is going to be returned so that, and y'all bear with me on these sketches, okay? You get the idea. So that it is reflected back something similar to this. We'll make this not quite so large. Okay, so now I have one string length is going to provide a full wave in this case. Now we started off with our reference being a half wave. So instead of saying one wavelength, I'm going to say two halves because we started off using a half wave. So we're gonna keep everything in terms of half waves, okay? So that means that one wavelength is going to require two lengths of the string. So two, I'm sorry, is going to require, um, we're going to be able to fit one wave on two halves of the string, okay? So that means that my frequency is going to be V over lambda, and once again, we're gonna rewrite that, where we're going to replace lambda with how much string is needed to make one wave. It is one full, string length or two halves of a string, okay? So when we rewrite that, again, we cannot leave a fraction inside of a fraction. Now I get that this simplifies to one, but bear with me on the fractions, okay? So technically we would multiply the numerator and the denominator by the reciprocal, so two over two is what we get, where we have two in the numerator with our speed, and two in the denominator with our string length. On this next harmonic, we have um, three harmonics. So our wave is going to hit the fixed boundary and it's going to reflect back. So we get three of those harmonics, okay? So on one full string length, I am able to fit Again, we started in referencing um, our waves as half waves, so I am able to fit three half waves on this string. So if you look at the wave, I have one and a half wavelengths, right? That's what would, we would simplify three halves to be. So if I put this in terms of my wavelength, I am going to need two thirds of the string in order to create that wave, okay? So it would take two thirds of the full length of our string. So again, this was the full string length, right? Looking back at the top example. So in order for me to have one full wave, I only needed two thirds of that. That's where that fraction comes from. Okay, so then my formula over here says F is equal to V over lambda which is going to be V over two thirds of a string length as my denominator. So when I multiply by my reciprocal, I'm multiplying by three over two. So that's going to leave me three in the numerator and two in the denominator. All right, for our last example, hopefully we're catching on to the pattern here. I have four harmonics, so this is going to give me 
a reflected wave that looks something like this. So on the full length of the string, I am able to fit four half waves, okay? Using our same half wave as our initial measuring um, increment. So then how much of a string do I need in order to make one wave? Well, I only need half of a wave, but again, we started putting all of our half of the string, but we started by using this initial fraction to write our string length. So this would be two fourths of a wave, which we know would simplify to one half of the wave. Okay, so on my image, it only requires half of the string in order to make that full wave. So my frequency is going to be V over lambda, which would be V over two-fourths of that string length. Again, we multiply by the reciprocal, so we are going to be multiplying by four over two, which is gonna give me four in the, in the numerator with my velocity, and two in the denominator. And I hope that you guys are starting to see the pattern here. So in our notes, we were given the formula for our um, frequency of a wave <clears throat> when we have a, a standing wave that is created that is closed on both ends. We said it was F for however many harmonics is equal to N times V over two L. Well, if we look at the equation that we have written, we have 2L as our denominator in each of these final versions for what our frequency is equal to. So that's why we have 2L as the denominator in this final equation. We have the letter N in our numerator where N represents the number of the harmonic. Well, our first drawing here of the light blue wave, we had an N value of one. I didn't write it, but it would be one over two if we were multiplying by the reciprocal. So N has a value of one. On our second harmonic, we have an N value of two. It's harmonic number two. And sure enough, when you look at this final equation, my N value is two in the numerator. So my second harmonic puts the number two in the numerator and we are dividing that by two L. My third harmonic has a three in place of where the N value belongs in my equation. So that's why we have three in the numerator, three V over two L. And I think that you guys get the idea from here, okay? So once again, when we are dealing with a standing wave that is closed on both ends. This is our equation where the N value represents the number for the harmonic, and we can calculate this for every harmonic. So all numbers can go, all whole numbers can go in that numerator location.